Instructions. The listening test is 45 minutes. There are tasks in the two parts of the listening test. Each task consists of a recorded video or audio scenario. The number of questions for each task also varies depending on the length of the video or audio. There are multiple choice questions for some listening tasks and shift to shift report for others. After you have completed all the tasks in the listening section, you may have some time remaining. You can use this time to navigate back to previous tasks to check your answers. Now get ready for the test and follow the instructions. Part 1. Tasks 1 to 4 Instructions. You will listen to a short audio or video recorded conversation and answer the questions. While listening, select the correct answer from the options provided for each question. Task 1. Patient Care. You will watch a dialogue between a nurse and a patient in a video scenario. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions. Listen to the recording and select your answers. The patient suffered from an accident that had put him in the hospital for over a month now. He is mostly recovered and is in his recovery phase. Now listen to the conversation. Good afternoon, Miss Jones. Good afternoon. How are you feeling today? I believe the discomfort in my lower seems to be well now. I guess physiotherapy has made me feel a lot better. That's good to hear. You seem to be enjoying your therapy lessons. I was informed you are doing well in your physiotherapy lessons. There has been much improvement in your case. You seem to be in a better physical condition. Nurse, I think I might have a fever. It's so cold in here. Can you please check my forehead? Here, let me check your forehead. What do you think? You feel a bit warm. Let me get a thermometer to check. How do I raise my bed? I don't know. Here you are. You can use the controls for that. Is that better? Could I have another pillow? Certainly, here you are. Is there anything else I can do for you? No, thank you. Okay, I'll be right back with the thermometer. Oh, just a moment. Can you bring me another bottle of water too? Certainly, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back. Here's your bottle of water. Please put the thermometer under your tongue. Thank you. Yes, you have a slight fever. I think I'll take your blood pressure as well. Is there anything to worry about? No, no. Everything's fine. It's normal to have a bit of fever after an operation like yours.
Yes, I'm so glad everything went well. in good hands here. Please hold out your arm for blood pressure. I see, it's normal. Don't worry. Thank you, nurse. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. Task 2, Patient Condition. You will watch a dialogue between a nurse and a visitor in a video scenario. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions. Listen to the recording and select your answers. Good afternoon, nurse. Good afternoon. Can I help you? I want to check my condition because I have a headache. Okay, what is your name, miss? My name is Lika. When were you born? I was born on August 3rd, 1980. Okay, Ms. Lika, do you have any problems besides your headache? No, nurse. Do you have a story of illness? No, I think. Okay, Miss Licka, I would like to assess your pain first. What aggravates your pain? My pain aggravates when I'm standing or trying to do activities. What does it feel like? Does your pain feel sharp, dull, or stabbing? I feel my pain is like exposed by a dull object. How severe is the pain on a scale of 0 to 10, with 0 being no pain and 10 being the worst pain ever? I think my pain scale is 7. When does the pain start? Two days ago, nurse. Okay, before being reviewed by the doctor, I would like to take your vital signs. Could you roll up your sleeve, please? I will put the cuff on your arm because I want to check your blood pressure. Okay. Well, Ms. Licka, I'm going to check your temperature too. Could you raise your arm because I want to put this thermometer on your armpit? Okay, like this, nurse. Yes, thanks. Now place your left hand on your shoulder for a moment. Okay. Well, Ms. Licka, your blood pressure is high enough, it's about 150-90 mmHg, and your temperature 37 degrees Celsius is normal. Now I'm going to check your pulse, please give me your hand, and I will press your artery gently. Okay, nurse. Your pulse is 92 and your respiration rate is 18, it is normal. But your blood pressure is not normal. I think you've got hypertension. Really? My father has hypertension too, nurse. Maybe, that's the reason why you have hypertension. Because hypertension is a hereditary disease. An unhealthy lifestyle can cause hypertension. So, what should I do, nurse? To control your high blood pressure, you must maintain a healthy weight, do physical activity, follow a healthy eating plan, reduce sodium in your diet, and avoid alcohol. To decrease your blood pressure, you need to take medicine too. Okay, nurse. Before we go to the doctor's room, do you have any questions, Ms. Licka? No, nurse. 
Okay, Ms. Licka, now, please follow me to the doctor's room to take your medicine. Okay, nurse, thank you for your information. Okay, Ms. Licka. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. Task 3 Patient Care. You will watch a dialogue between a nurse and a patient in a video scenario. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions. Listen to the recording and select your answers. Hello, good morning. I'm your nurse, Nurse Novi. Good morning, Nurse Novi. Welcome to Pamulang Hospital. Oh, yes, thank you. And you miss Nina Sapcianti, right? Yes. You can call me Nina. Okay, Miss Nina, I'll be taking care of you. We are going to take good care of you. And now I'm going to take you to your room now. Okay, great. Follow me, please. Okay. Here's your room, first class room. Nice room. Here is your bed. There are a pillow and a blanket. If you get bored, you can switch on the TV. And this is the table. Here, you can put your stuff on the drawers. Where is the toilet, nurse? Oh, the toilet is over there. And this is the bell, which has a function to call the healthcare team if you need anything. Please press the bell if you need anything when the healthcare team doesn't exist in your room. Okay, I get it. Is there any question about this room, Miss Nina? No, I don't have any questions, Nurse Novi. Do you want something to drink? Yes, that would be nice. Thank you. But Nurse, I want to drink a coffee, can I? No, you can't drink coffee, Miss Nina. An appendicitis patient should keep away from food with an extreme temperature because it can increase the pain after an operation. You should reduce spicy food and chocolate as well as doesn't eat too much food with fat. And also can't drink alcohol, orange juices, and as I said before, you can't drink coffee. So you can get well soon. I see. But can I drink a coffee when I was healed, nurse? Of course, you can, but not too often drink a coffee. Something too much is always not good. You should still keep eating healthy food. Okay, thank you, nurse. I have understood. And remember to not eat or drink three hours before you get rest or sleep. So what you eat can't vomit. Okay. I will remember it, nurse. I'm so sleepy now. You better take a rest now, Miss Nina. Get some sleep. After that, I will bring you some food and your medicine. Okay. Thank you, Nurse Novi. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers.
Task 4 to assist the patient. You will hear a dialogue between a medical office assistant and a patient. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions. Listen to the recording and select your answers. Hello. Hello, good morning. Royal Victoria Hospital. Good morning, I have some queries. Yes, please. I am Amelia, a medical office assistant at the Royal Victoria Hospital. Please tell me, what can I help with? I just wanted to ask some questions about the cost in this hospital. Of course, may I know your name? Miss. My name is Ava and I have this thyroid problem. I've checked myself with Dr. Lucas, but in another hospital. He also practices here, right? Dr. Lucas Doe, yes, miss. He has afternoon practice from 3 to 8 p.m. Did you meet him at Jewish General Hospital? Yes, last week. He checked my thyroid problem and said that I would need an operation to take out the bump. I had wanted to have the operation at Jewish General Hospital but with or without insurance, the waiting list is pretty long. They have a lot of patients there. I see. Dr. Lucas said, if I would, he could have me operated on here. But how much does it cost to have a thyroid operation in this hospital? Well, it really depends on the kind of operation. Miss I can't say how much exactly. But it's around $30,000 and that doesn't include the room, medicine, and doctor's visitation but it may vary depending on the severeness of the case and what kind of operation the doctor chooses to do. Oh, okay. Could it be lower than $30,000? It's possible, but not by much. I'm sorry. I actually can't say exactly, but that's the average so far. We have to check on Dr. Lucas again about your case. And what about the room? What kind of room do you have? Well, we have a list of the room in their facility. It ranges from $4,000 to $6,000 per night. There's also the doctor's fee, depending on what room you choose for recovery. How long do patients with thyroid problems stay in the hospital in total? More or less a week, depending on the patient's reaction toward the treatment. We have to check on Dr. Lucas again for your case. If you want, I can book an appointment with him. Maybe this afternoon. All right. Then, is that okay this afternoon at 3 p.m.? I mean, if the thyroid problem really bothers you, then you might want to treat it as soon as possible. Now, it's rather hard for me to breathe when I lie down, and it's also difficult for me to swallow. All right then. I'll put your name on the list for Dr. Lucas's appointment this afternoon.
Thank you, nurse. You're welcome, Liz. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. Part 2. Tasks 5 Instructions. Listen to the report and dialogue and circle the correct answers as you listen. Task 5A. Shift to Shift Report. As you listen to the Shift to Shift Report, circle the best choice for each room and patient. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions on the chart before the audio begins. Listen to the recording and select your answers. This is the morning shift report for Thursday, August 9th. Room 173. Mrs. Jones had surgery on her back. Today is her third day post-op. She's doing excellent. She's getting up with one assist utilizing the walker, ambulating to the bathroom, and Dr. Fandaka was her physician. Pain was pretty well controlled. Range is up to a 7 at times, and taking 2 to 4 milligrams of dilaudid. The last dose given was at 3.30 a.m., and she only took 2 milligrams. So, she can have more at any time if needed. Dressing is clean and dry. Room 174, Miss Thomas, she's a 50-year-old female. She was admitted last night. Her complaints were sharpness of breath and neural has swelling. She has a diagnosis of CHF exacerbation. She does have a long history of CHF in addition to hypertension and diabetes. She's known for drug allergies. Miss Thomas is currently awake alert, and she does have some weakness in her legs. Her activity is up with assistance. She does have a golden catheter. It's draining for a yellow urine, and she put out more about a liter. The dressing is cleaned right in time. Her diet is a 2 gram sodium diet currently. She's on cardiac monitor, and she has been sinus rhythm with no activity. Now next is, room 183, Margot Carley, is 56 year old, that came through the emergency department and admitted for pneumonia. Margot presented to the emergency department early this morning with difficulty breathing, cough, and chest pain. She had a room air oxygen saturation of 84%. She has a history of a recently treated pneumonia and we are currently giving her IV antibiotics and IV steroids through a PICC line on her right side that was placed this morning after multiple IV attempts. She was given a Norco for pain about two hours ago. Dr. Massey will be in there this afternoon to discuss the results of that CT scan. Now, room 189, Mr. Fernandez, is the 52-year-old gentleman who is with his wife Judy. He was fell down at home. He had lower extremity swelling for five days and weeks experiencing shortness of breath and weakness. Since he fell at home, so he is considered a high fall risk. Therefore, we need to keep the bed alarm at all times. He need 20 milligrams of Lasix twice a day and he is going to be on a 1 liter fluid restriction. We are going to keep his O2 saturation greater than 92%. Next, room 192. 
This is Craig. She's a 65-year-old female. She has a one-day post-op from a total abdominal hysterectomy. She has no known diagnosed allergies. Her vital signs have been stapled today. Her pain is 7 out of 10. She's on a liquid diet. She has ordered 0.5 milligrams of dilated IV as needed every 2 hours. Incision site tapes are checked. They are clean, dried and attached. We need to check the concerned doctor about the painkiller medication. So that, we could give additionally to the patient. Another thing that might help with the pain is, just simple mechanical issues. She is advised to move her bones and muscles a lot of time. That activity will actually help to decrease her pain. Next and the last, room 194, Mr. Michael, was admitted to the emergency department at 8 p.m. yesterday night. He was suffering from severe abdominal pain. He had an MRI scan which showed that he has two large kidney stones. He's on painkillers at the moment taking Andone and Ibuprofen. His blood pressure is 136 over 80, temperature is 37.0, and heart rate is 76. He'll be going into surgery tomorrow at 9 a.m. He'll need to fast from 9 p.m. onwards. He is not allowed to drink any water. But he can have some ice chips if he's feeling thirsty. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. Task 5B, Shift to Shift Report. Now, listen to the Shift to Shift Report again, and circle the best choice for each room and patient. This time, you will need to listen for different details. Listen to the recording and select your answers. This is the morning shift report for Thursday, August 9th. Room 173. Mrs. Jones had surgery on her back. Today is her third day post-op. She's doing excellent. She's getting up with one assist utilizing the walker, ambulating to the bathroom, and Dr. Fan Daka was her physician. Pain was pretty well controlled. Range is up to a 7 at times, and taking 2 to 4 milligrams of dilated. The last dose given was at 3.30 a.m., and she only took 2 milligrams. So, she can have more at any time if needed. Dressing is clean and dry. Room 174, Miss Thomas. She's a 50-year-old female. She was admitted last night. Her complaints were sharpness of breath and neural has swelling. She has a diagnosis of CHF exacerbation. She does have a long history of CHF in addition to hypertension and diabetes. She's known for drug allergies. Miss Thomas is currently awake alert, and she does have some weakness in her legs. Her activity is up with assistance. She does have a golden catheter. It's draining for a yellow urine, and she put out more about a liter. The dressing is cleaned right in time. Her diet is a 2-gram sodium diet currently. She's on cardiac monitor, and she has been sinus rhythm with no activity. Now next is, room 183, Margot Carley, is 56-year-old, that came through the emergency department and admitted for pneumonia. 
Margot presented to the emergency department early this morning with difficulty breathing, cough, and chest pain. She had a room air oxygen saturation of 84%. She has a history of a recently treated pneumonia, and we are currently giving her IV antibiotics and IV steroids through a PICC line on her right side that was placed this morning after multiple IV attempts. She was given an orco for pain about two hours ago. Dr. Massey will be in there this afternoon to discuss the results of that CT scan. Now, room 189, Mr. Fernandez, is the 52-year-old gentleman who is with his wife Judy. He was fell down at home. He had lower extremity swelling for five days and weeks experiencing shortness of breath and weakness. Since he fell at home, so he is considered a high fall risk. Therefore, we need to keep the bed alarm at all times. He need 20 milligrams of Lasix twice a day, and he is going to be on a 1 liter fluid restriction. We are going to keep his O2 saturation greater than 92%. Next, room 192. This is Craig. She's a 65-year-old female. She has a one-day post-op from a total abdominal hysterectomy. She has no known diagnosed allergies. Her vital signs have been stapled today. Her pain is 7 out of 10. She's on a liquid diet. She has ordered 0.5 milligrams of dilated IV as needed every two hours. Incision side tapes are checked. They are clean, dried and attached. We need to check the concerned doctor about the painkiller medication so that we could give additionally to the patient. Another thing that might help with the pain is just simple mechanical issues. She is advised to move her bones and muscles a lot of time. That activity will actually help to decrease her pain. Next and the last. Room 194, Mr. Michael, was admitted to the emergency department at 8 p.m. yesterday night. He was suffering from severe abdominal pain. He had an MRI scan which showed that he has two large kidney stones. He's on painkillers at the moment taking Endone and Ibuprofen. His blood pressure is 136 over 80, temperature is 37.0, and heart rate is 76. He'll be going into surgery tomorrow at 9 a.m. He'll need to fast from 9 p.m. onwards. He is not allowed to drink any water. But he can have some ice chips if he's feeling thirsty. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers.